Hey, One Stop Co-op Shop fans, this is Mike, and today I'm going to be looking at Aeon Trespass Odyssey, which is a campaign-based kind of tactical combat game. It's coming to Kickstarter really soon, and we're going to do three videos for you. One of them is going to show the big kind of boss combat you engage in. The second one's going to show you how the campaign works and the choices you make there. And finally, I'll do a review of the demo content I've played so far. A quick disclaimer, as always, we received no compensation for this. We weren't paid anything. We never accept any money from publishers. And in this case, I'm sending this demo on to another reviewer, so I'm not even going to uh, keep the stuff you see in this video. So Aeon Trespass Odyssey is set in sort of an alternate Greek mythological time period where you get kind of a mishmash of uh, technology and typical Greek mythology. Closest comparison I can think of for the theme is Lords of Hellas from uh, Awaken Realms. And I'll say for those watching this playthrough who have played Kingdom Death Monster or have seen any of Berndt's stuff on it, this game is going to look pretty familiar because a lot of the mechanics in here are inspired by Kingdom Death. In fact, in some places they even have the same terms for things. I'll discuss that more in my review and kind of uh, give my thoughts about how the two games compare, but for now we're just going to play this and see how the boss fighting works. So when you go into a battle, you'll get this little diagram of setup. You'll see that all these little rubble tokens were pre-placed for me. It shows where the monster, this is a Hecaton, and uh, this is a more brittle, hard plastic. The real game will have a uh, nicer, softer plastic, but uh, you can see like one of his hands fell off. But yeah, he's this giant sort of hand beast. Uh, the ones in the middle kind of remind me of the helping hands from Labyrinth, for those who know that movie. And the heroes are these pilots who are interfacing with these giant titans that are sort of like human-shaped, but gigantic organic creatures that we use to fight these uh, behemoths over here. And we'll also get the rest of the setup as well as some story. Now, this is the uh, second big fight in the prelude, which is all I've played. It's uh, about 20 days worth of gameplay, so... Probably for me, it took about 10 hours to get through all of it. And you'll see it shows you the primordial setup and what you do with your uh, Titans and their Argonauts, uh, which are the pilots. I'll uh, get into all that in a second. So we start with some ruins. We also have a city over here in the corner. If we let the Titan get to that, he can uh, smash it and destroy it. And we do have cards that show the effects of these. Basically, the ruins, if we're shoved into them, we take a damage, which we'll get to soon. The Primordial, which is the big monster, might take a damage. In the city, we can gain some defense by standing on it, but if we get crushed into it, we get this negative token, token that affects our progress in the campaign. We're then going to shuffle up the other terrain cards and draw two at random. In this case, we have some Labyrinth tiles and a giant shell. So the basic effects of these, uh, the shell we can get thrown into and take damage, but otherwise, once per mission, we can search it to potentially get some good stuff for ourselves. And the cards give you uh, restrictions on where you can set it up, but besides that, you are free to choose wherever you want. So this one I'll put kind of over here in a corner to not be too far away if I do want to go there and search it. The four labyrinth tiles have to be no more than five spaces away from the primordial, and we don't want them to be too close because they don't really help us out. He just ignores them and smashes us anyway. So we'll put that one there. Put this one kind of down there out of the way. Put that one there. And sure, that one there. And basically the big thing for these is if we get thrown into them, we'll take some damage and uh, we can't cross over the red line. So if we walk into these, we gotta go through the hallway basically. Now let's look at our characters for a second and kind of go over the basics of them. So you have uh, four Argonauts all the time and you get these at the start of the game and they have different skills like uh, Kierkegaard here, or Circe Guard, like Circe the Sorceress, I guess, has uh, Wisdom. These skills will, generally speaking, only come into play during the campaign mode of the game, where you voyage around on the Argo, your, like, kind of space age-ish uh, Greek ship, and have adventures. Now, your characters are kind of, like, reincarnated, so they can sometimes earn these, uh, I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation, it's M-N-E-N-O-S, so Menos or Nenos or something. But these will slowly get leveled up, and some of them do give you abilities during combat. So this one, for example, will stop the boss from knocking me uh, back or pushing me back so I can kind of stand my ground better. Now Odysseus over there, Odysseus Zero, he's the only one who has one that affects combat. Uh, Telebacchus has one, but it does not affect combat. Additionally, each character has, uh, this is very important for combat, their Triskelion. This keeps track of all their main statistics. So you've got Danger, which will get slowly counted up as you get hurt, basically. I'll count up as this way. 
And uh, if this goes over nine, you have a chance of dying. And also whenever you take a trauma from being hurt by the uh, boss, then you can, uh, it's a worse trauma based on how much danger you have. Fate is kind of like our mitigation. We can use that to re-roll dice as we attack and defend. But uh, if your fate is very high, the boss tends to do more damage to you. So you don't want to use that too much. And then Rage is entirely positive unless you go above 9. But until then, you slowly unlock these ascending uh, Kratos abilities based on your Rage. So uh, at first you can leave these tokens, the little eyeball and kind of like slash there are tokens you can leave uh, for other players to help them attack better. And eventually you can get like bonus damage dice and a bunch of fun stuff like that. Now note that all these things are cards. Uh, I'm not that far in the campaign here where I'm showing, but you can gain like little bonuses that can change these and make you more resistant to damage and stuff. Other things to note here, we've got the movement stat. It's five for all our guys. The basic uh, damage die you start with, one red die. Everyone's got the same two danger ability. That means when you've taken two damage or more, you can use this. So uh, a big key thing in this game is that as you get more hurt and as the boss gets more hurt, you both unlock better abilities and do cooler stuff. So rush uses up both your move and your attack. Basically, when you activate, you get to move and attack. Uh, but you can run forward and do extra damage, basically. And then one in a million, uh, it's her special ability. If she has eight or more danger, it gives her a chance to like really hurt the boss in a directed way. And note, by the way, that my Triskelions already have some values on them. As you go through your voyage in the campaign mode, it will add values that go into the next fight. It is cleared back down to zero after each fight. But again, as you kind of journey some more, you can have things grow back up. Finally, the last thing is we have some equipment. Uh, everyone except for Odysseus just has the basic fist weapons. The green die is how many dice you roll. This is your bonus to hitting the monster, and this is uh, for each die that hits how many damage dice you roll. Again, very similar to Kingdom of Death and the speed statistic if you've uh, seen that game. Telebacchus and Fenelope are kind of my defenders, so they've got these little sail spolas that can uh, give them plus one defense and also discard to cancel a trauma card that's really bad. But yeah, Odysseus is sort of my damage dealer, I'm hoping. He's got a sword that rolls an extra die and has some special abilities and also has a shield that makes him a little bit harder to hit. So hopefully he won't die. Okay, the last thing to look at is our primordial board. This is the Hecaton. I'm going to be fighting a level uh, one Hecaton here. Now, it's pretty hard to see, but basically he has six movement. You need a seven plus to hit him, and he has ten life to defeat him. Here, we can zoom in a little bit on that. He's got a routine action, which is idle hand. That means, like, if he can't find anybody to attack, he'll throw a rock at our ship and damage it. And then he's got a signature attack, which you'll see a lot of his AI cards will have him do, which is just a pretty basic smack knocking us back. And for setup, he's got these three AI decks with little actions he can take. We're going to randomly take away one from each deck. They're numbered one, two, and three. And then we're going to put the one deck on his AI spot. The two and the three, though, will go away. But as we hurt him, he'll gain these. So as he gets more angry and uh, kind of gets uh, hurt by us, he will become more powerful. Now, the same thing happens with his BP body part cards. If you don't remove any, but you just have the one here and you have the uh, two and three ready to go. And that's it. We go right into the Hecaton's turn because, generally speaking, unless you have a special ability that says otherwise, the Primordial, the boss, is going to act first. So on their turn, all we do is draw the first card. In this case, we've got a 1-2 punch. So we have some targeting uh, language. It targets the closest Titan in front. We'll see what that looks like in a second in range. We definitely have that. He's going to move an attack for two dice with a 9-plus needed to dodge. So the Primordial always hits you. You get a chance to dodge to try to cancel it. And here it says each hit deals one danger. So we'll kind of take one damage for each one that hits out of those two dice. And if the person targeted has three or more fate, remember that's the mitigating trait, then they get a hit for three dice instead of two. And then afterwards, he performs his signature attack, so he's going to uh, one-two punch, hit us again. Now, it said in front, in range. For in front, uh, you have a line kind of in the front of the monster here, so either of these two titans are fair game. Now, to determine which of our two guys the primordial attacks... Uh, Fenelope right now has the highest rage. She has two. That makes her the priority target, which means when she's eligible, she's always the one attacked. But in this case, uh, she is not eligible. So between Odysseus and Telebacchus, we go clockwise from the priority target. So Odysseus is going to get attacked. I'm sorry, I know his name is Odys Zero and he's all <laughs> uh, cool technological and stuff, but uh, I'm just going to call him Odysseus. All right, so Primordial can move up to six spaces. This is all orthogonal. So one, two, three... 
four, five. Always turn to face the person being attacked. Remember the one, two punch said uh, two dice with a nine plus to dodge. Odizira does not have three fates, so he doesn't get the plus one die. He does have a shield, gives him plus one, so he needs an eight plus to dodge. And this is very unlikely, but if he dodges everything and rolls a 10, a natural 10, then he'll also have a little ability where he knocks the primordial back. So we roll these. And oh my gosh, almost a critical of eight if that had been an eight instead of a nine. So we could use fate, a one fate point per die re-rolled, but you can only re-roll a given die once. In this case, those are pretty great results. We'll just have Odizira go up to three danger. Now, every time a Primordial attacks you and uh, finishes the attack, you have to draw a trauma card for your current danger level. Uh, at one to three, you're drawing a level one trauma card. At four to six, level two. At seven to nine, level three. So Odizira gets insulted. If in range, perform an immediate attack. Now, this is super lucky. So there are actually positive cards in here because, again, they kind of want to reward you for getting hurt sometimes. For one thing, I'm going to get a free attack on him. But for another thing, any uh, remaining effects that have not resolved yet when someone attacks kind of breaks the chain and that stuff doesn't happen anymore. So that means the second punch of the one-two punch is never taking place because of this zero just uh, smashed this guy in response. So now I'll show you how combat works for my Titans. It's a uh, two-step process. So first, we're going to roll uh, three dice. And every time a Titan attacks, their rage goes up by one and they immediately gain access to the new abilities. And for Odizir, he's rolling three dice. He needs a seven plus to hit the Primordial, has no bonuses. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh, that was not a nine, but... So this is a critical chance because we got a zero, same as the critical evade, and we've got two hits, and we're going to see uh, what that looks like in a second. So each of the two hits, as indicated on the Siren Teeth knives, gives us a red die, so we've got two from that. And then additionally, you'll see that uh, Oda Zero, with his Titan, his basic ability is plus one, so we've got three. And at level two, Kratos, to level two Rage, he's going to get to re-roll one of these, and additionally, he'll get to leave one of these two tokens at the end of his attack, which you'll see in a second. Now, before I roll my three dice, I get to see what I'm attacking. Uh, in this case, it's a really tough one, so I probably won't break through. This is a shield fist. I need to get three successes. Successes are these little diamond symbols. Now, the red dice also have a bunch of these other symbols, but you can't trigger these until you have tokens left over from another Titan attacking. So it uh, is unfortunate that it is zero is probably not going to get his crit because to get the crit, we have to defeat this uh, thing by getting at least three successes. Note there's a response from the uh, Primordial. If we fail, he's going to do this. If we get a crit, which again requires us to get three hits, we'll do that and ignore the fail. And then uh, he'll escalate in either case if we hurt him. He won't escalate if we don't. So we have one reroll, but not too much of a chance here of getting three hits. Yeah, so even with a reroll, there is no chance. Okay. So we go to the fail result, which means that uh, he's going to gain one fate and he's going to get knocked down. That's really uh, too bad. He goes down, and it means that uh, at the end of this turn, he'll get rid of the knockdown card, and then next turn he'll stand up. So he's going to miss his entire actual turn here. Now, because we did not defeat this, it goes into the discard pile. If we had defeated it, which hopefully we'll see soon, we would have done one of the 10 damage. This card would go there to show that 10 damage, and some other stuff would happen. And then at the end of the fight, you get to leave behind any tokens that your current uh, rage level lets you leave. Here I get to choose either one that can give a hit from one of those other results on the red dice. This is my favorite when the uh, Primordial is pretty easy to hit like this one is. Or you can get this eye token, which gives plus one to all the dice that are trying to hit. But again, I'm usually going with these in uh, the early Primordials. So I'm going to leave that on the Primordial sheet, and the next Titan that attacks has to use it, so I can't like keep it around, but it could help them break through their armor. Speaking of the next Titan, it's now our turn. I get to activate my guys in whatever order I want. Uh, DeZero's, um, unfortunately, is going to be laying down on the job. Remember, we can move up to five spaces, orthogonal, just like the Primordial, and attack, and we can do that in either order. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that actually works out pretty well for us, because Telebacchus has three danger right now, which means that he can use his rush ability and run an extra space, so he can actually get over there and attack the Primordial. And it looks like Cersei Guard can also get to him, but not Fenelope yet. Or sorry, that's Cersei Guard, so Fenelope can get to him. So let's have Fenelope run in first. She's the uh, primary target, so I'd rather him kind of get angry at her first. So she'll move up to five spaces and then attack. Her rage goes up to three, and that will keep her the priority target. The only way to change the priority target is for their rage to exceed the current one. So someone else would have to go to four before she went to four to become the new priority target. Now she sadly, like everyone except Odysseus, only has fists. So she's just rolling two dice and also getting reds for each hit she has, which needs a seven or more. 
Oh my gosh, I'm rolling great. Okay, so a really nice roll there for the fist. So just like Odazir, she's gonna have two reds plus uh, one from her regular given red, and she has one reroll. And I'm targeting, ooh, a nice easy one, one of a hundred. I kind of feel like this is a waste of such a nice roll. Okay, so I'm gonna roll, I need at least one hit, and I easily got it. Now, unfortunately, I do have to discard this token. I can't keep them around, uh, so I lose it, even though I didn't need it here. But the card says, uh, gain one fate when I wound the guy. I bring Fenelope up to two. And now we get to see how escalation works, which is how the boss gets tougher as he's hurt. By the way, this is going over on like next to the boss sheet and that's one of his 10 wounds. We get 10 of these, he is dead. So to escalate the body part deck, since we already lost a card, we don't have to do anything extra here. We just take a two and shuffle it in. Now the uh, twos are harder to hurt, but also tend to kind of do better things for you if you can get through to them. And the threes are like sort of critical hits and they can do double damage. So uh, you can see what's on top and know how tough it's going to be to break through the armor. AI deck's a little bit different, a little bit nastier. You take out a level one card forever, a card matching the BP, and you shuffle in a level two. So now he is doing a tougher stuff when he activates. And note now that Fenelope, as she finishes, she has three raids, so she's going to get to pick uh, two of the tokens to leave. I think she'll leave one of each for Talabacus' attack coming up. So speaking of him, he's going to use his rush ability to move one, two, three, four, five, six... And that does cost him a fate, by the way, so he's making himself more vulnerable by using that. He's going to roll two to hit, but he's got plus one from the eye token left by the last attack, so he needs sixes instead of sevens. Oh, and that was good, because he got an extra die from it. Awesome. Now, normally he'd have his one regular red plus two more for the hit dice, but because he was rushing, he actually gets an extra die. But he's only on rage one, so he does not get a reroll. And he is trying to take down... Oh, another easy one. I wish I was not rolling so well for these. All right, and easily. It would have been four, wow, with the uh, Kratos token that was left by the other attack. So same as before, we're going to gain a fate and escalate. I won't show it this time, but it's the same thing we just did. We do still have a one on top, just a note. We might not want to have our strongest attacker go first next time. And uh oh, we ended up with a two AI card on top, so we're probably in for a little bit of pain here. All right, our final Titan can just move uh, five spaces. She can't really reach the thing to search for, so she might as well just come over toward the fray. Okay, we go right into the Primordial's turn. And we're doing a Solar Plexer. Only one die, an A-plus to dodge. That means it must be really nasty. Okay, so it targets the priority target in range. Interesting. So he's going to turn around and attack her, even though uh, she was facing kind of behind him and not in, in view. Now, thank God she does not have three-plus uh, fate, because it would have been plus one die, and each hit here is going to do two damage, not one. All right, so she's rolling a single save. She does have some armor, the Sail Spoiler, so she needs a seven, not an eight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting really lucky with these rolls, man. This is not normal. So look how great this is. After trauma, she would have been knocked back three, but she didn't suffer any trauma. After attack, if damage was dealt, she would make a Kratos save. She didn't suffer any damage. So uh, your solar plexer is nothing, buddy. It's back to our turn. Odis Zero is back up and raring to go. And I forgot to say, Telebogus left one of the plus damage tokens after his attack. All right, so here we've got a uh, one body part on top. So we don't really want to have Odis Zero go first since he's our strongest guy. So I think we'll have uh, one of the people who hurt him last time go. And she could take a fate to use Rush and just run around him for three spaces and get plus one red die. But with a one BP and fate making you more vulnerable, don't really want to do that. So she'll just do a basic attack and then move afterwards. And she's going up to four rage. So now she's going to be even stronger. But first, let's see if she can hit... Oh my gosh! All right, uh, wow. So this is a critical possibility and probably gonna happen with two hits. And the body part it is a mighty fist. So she needs to get two successes. Uh, she has two from her hits plus her regular one, so that's three. And she has a Kratos token waking, waiting. Let's hope it happens. And yes, with the Kratos token, so that's one success plus one from the token. That is the two we need. Now, because she rolled a critical, a zero in her hitting, we ignore the wound effect and just go here. And this is great. Hecaton gets a minus I token. So this is permanent for the rest of the battle. He's going to have this on his sheet, and that means he is one easier to hit. So now we need six to hit him instead of sevens, which should make things uh, definitely easier if we keep rolling the way we do. Now, even with the crit, we do still escalate. This is our third damage, by the way. Important to know we have a BP2 on top. That's definitely going to play into my decision in a second. And we're quickly running out of ones in the deck, but luckily the only one left on uh, the regular deck is the one I drew. Now, since uh, we have a two body part on top, I'm going to have her leave two of these break tokens with her level four rage she can. I'm going to have Ode Zero go next, our guy with uh, three dice, and hopefully he'll just be able to smash through that level two armor. All right, now she can move, and let's go just a little bit away. 
There are some responses and attacks that can hit everyone in one range, so you don't want to stay right next to the guy if you don't need to. And by the way, she did have the ability to push him with her attack. That's what uh, one of the options you get once you get to Kratos level or Rage level 4. But uh, since the rune was over here, unless she could have gotten over to this side of him... Oh, I guess maybe she could have. Can she attack through the labyrinth? Well, I'm not sure. For, for now, we'll just uh, leave it the way it was. All right, so a dis zero will go next, and... Uh... Yeah, he doesn't have the pushback. He's only at rage level 2. So I guess he'll stay where he is in the move afterwards. He does go to rage 3. Looking pretty good. And don't forget he has the knife that rolls 3 dice. And he now needs 6s with each instead of 7s. Ah, there we go. So not as good luck here. So I could re-roll each of these misses once with fate. But man, he's already at 3 fate. So uh, I guess we'll just let it be and probably not break his armor. Oh my gosh, yeah. So a 5 successes needed to break through here. I've only got two red dice. Good luck. I made a decent effort uh, with I had two Kratos tokens. I only got to use one of them, so that's three, but still not enough. Okay, so on a fail... Ooh, I gain one damage automatically, or one danger. Now, I don't draw a trauma when that happens, only when he hits me with a regular attack or something else says to draw a trauma, but still, that wasn't great. Now, his uh, teeth... Oh, I forgot to do this last time he attacked. But yeah, he gets to leave automatically one of the plus one accuracy uh, tokens behind. And there is another uh, level 2 on top, so since he uh, can see that, I think he's going to leave these behind for the next attacker. And his uh, weapon lets him back away one after he attacks, but I think he'll go a bit further than that. Although, hmm, if the guy goes toward one of us, let's not go that far away. Let's go one away from uh, being right next to him. All right, she has no rage and he has one, so he's definitely the better candidate to attack next. So going in, uh, he's against the level 2 body part with just his fist, but he does have some nice tokens to help out. He needs 5s to hit because of the bonus from Odysseus Zero's attack and also the uh, damage of the guy. There we go, 2 hits. So that's uh, 3 dice and 2 bonus tokens waiting to help me. And I only need a 4 this time, not as bad. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, ooh, is that enough? 1, 2, plus 2 from the tokens, that is 4. So it's not a crit. Uh, we get a push back one, and then Hecaton performs a signature attack against uh, the guy. Oh, that's not great. So a push back means he goes backwards one, and Hecaton moves with him. And then Hecaton's going to turn toward him and try to punch him. But this still goes uh, to the wound pile, and we're going to escalate in a second. So that'll give us a four out of ten damage. Now, signature attack is a smack. It's two dice normally. You need a ten to dodge it. And uh, unfortunately, Telebacchus does have three or more fates, so it's three dice he has to dodge with, and uh, he'll take one damage for each he misses, and then he gets knocked back five spaces after he takes a trauma. Jeez. So he's got armor as well. He needs nines instead of tens, but that's not it. I'll put him to six danger, but he's already at four fate. I don't really want to tempt that too much, so I guess he'll just take it, unfortunately. It puts him up to six danger, which means he is going to draw a level two trauma card. In this case, it is utmost willpower. Discard up to two combat cards. And if you don't have any, subtract one. Oh, so there's actually another bonus one. So I could have gotten rid of some condition cards on me, but I don't have any. So I'm just going to go down one fate, uh, down to three instead of four. Awesome. Luck is certainly on my side because the majority of these things are not positive. But it still said, after suffering trauma, get knocked back five. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, in the basic scenario, getting knocked to the edge of the board doesn't actually hurt you at all. But uh, this guy has some cards when you fight tougher versions of him that can make you die if you get thrown off the edge because you're fighting on a cliff. So glad we're not here. All right, we can't forget to escalate. Let's see what ends up on top. It's a level one. Probably good for me. And here we actually remove a level two AI because it's a level two part that was hurt and replace it with a level three. Lord help us. And of course it's on top. I need to shuffle better. <laughs> All right, so the only one left is Cersei Guard, who can finally get into this, but one, two, three, four, five, six. No, 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 she has no danger, so she can't rush to get into range. So I guess she'll just one, two, three, four, and uh, hang out there for the moment. All right, with everyone having gone, it is the Primordial's turn. Uh, Skull Crusher, doesn't sound good. Okay, closest Titan in front in range. Oh, there we go. It's Otis Zero, our favorite fighter. Okay, so he moves an attack. If I have eight plus fate plus one die, I don't. Oh my gosh, four danger if he hits me. And then I get knocked out too. Oh man, I really hope I dodge this. So I've got my shield for Otis Zero. He needs a seven to dodge and he can re-roll it once. Don't get my skull crushed. Don't get my skull crushed. He needs seven. Ooh, <laughs> I didn't even need the shield. Look at that. All right, Primordial, you're just embarrassing yourself right now. Let's uh, 
push you out of your misery. All right, so I have to decide who to act with first. Telebacchus can get in uh, without a rush, although he could rush if he wanted to. He seems like a good one to lead off with because there's a level one on top, so he'll probably be able to break through it pretty easily, but he's not uh, quite as rageful as either of these guys. So yeah, let's have him go first. We'll save uh, her for the end, I think. So one, two, three, four, five. Does he want to rush? He just got a fate back. So sure, I think he's going to rush. So that brings his fate back to four, and he'll get plus one red die if he hits. All right, so he needs uh, sixes, no bonuses this time. Oh, man, <laughs> okay. The fire continues, plus two. So that is four red dice, and with his rage level three, he can reroll one of them. Let's see what we got. Ooh, a shield fist. Okay, this would be a good one to destroy. He's got three. He's got one token remaining for him. He needs to get three hits. Come on. Oh, crud. Okay, so he has one reroll. He's got two right now. Let's see, one hit. Come on, come on. Ah, did not get it. Oh, man, so I'm going to get knocked down and skip my next turn. That is unfortunate. All right, so the new body part on top is a two. I think we'll have Ode Zero go then. Let's have Telebacchus lead behind one of each, since Ode Zero has so many dice that should be better for him. Well, let's see, he could push the guy into that. Can he get around there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, so he's going to rush and uh, get over to this side. Brings his fate up to four. There we go. He's rolling three dice with the bonus from Telebacchus. Needs a five to hit with each one. Oh, man. Okay, so two. I guess we're okay with that. So that's four total with the rush and his regular bonus. And the body part is hand feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we need three hits. We've got one token to help us. And, yeah, that'll do it. Okay, one, two, plus a one for any of these symbols. So we got him. So he's going to gain a fate on a uh, the wound. Oh, if he'd gotten a critical, the guy couldn't push back anymore. And then he'll escalate the AI twice. Oh, it's terrible. So a small rule thing, you'll see we only have one level two in here. So when that happens, we look through the discard pile. So we'll escalate uh, both of these level twos in this case. And we have a bunch of level threes in the deck now, but we do have a level one on top. So don't forget to zero swords, give him a free eyeball. So we're going to do two eyeballs this time. The level one, I just want to make sure I hit. Okay, now he can push the guy into the ruins next to him because uh, he didn't have to use that reroll. So on a 1 and 2, nothing happens. On a 3 to 8, it gets a minus 2 to its next armor check. And on a 9 to 10, it actually takes a free wound. That'd be amazing. So can awesome stuff keep happening? Okay, no. So just uh, minus 2 to the next armor. It should make the level 1 super easy to break through. And that's removed, of course. And so now I've got an interesting choice to make because she's more leveled up in Rage, which means she'll have some extra red things, but it also means that she'll leave better stuff for the other girl. Whereas if she attacks first against a really easy thing, she'll leave almost nothing for uh, for Penelope here to actually damage the guy. Uh, let's have her take the easy shot, and we'll have the other person go next. All right, we got plus three to hit, so we only need fours here. Come on. <laughs> we still miss with one. Great. Actually, you know what the heck. Let's re-roll that because she has pretty low faith. There we go. So now we got uh, three red dice. We're targeting Mighty Fist. Just need two. We've got one token to help us. Oh my gosh. So even with the one bonus, she does nothing. That is unfortunate because she doesn't have enough rage to re-roll yet. But nothing happens to her. I guess that's okay. All right, there is a level two on top. Let's see if maybe we can get through it. Right, so she's going to run up, I guess, there. She's only at the five rage now, so she's gonna get to leave two tokens behind. She gets a free extra red die. She gets two rerolls or a push and a reroll, so pretty good. But because the other person's so behind on the power curve, uh, she's only getting plus one damage. Come on, we got a hit here. Oh man, just one. She's only got two fate. Should I go for it? 50 50 chance. It's a level two. Let's go for it. So she'll use a fate. Ooh, crit chance. Okay. So even though she doesn't rush, she has four dice because of her new level five rage. But she's going against bone plates. Oh my gosh, she needs a five. She's only got one token to help her, plus two rerolls. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. Okay. That was terrible. Well, I think it was no chance now, but I guess I'll reroll the misses. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely nothing. So on a fail, she takes one danger. Oh, we would have gotten a free uh, weapon if we had injured him. Oh, that would have been amazing. Oh, well. Uh, but on a positive note, she does get to leave behind some nice damage there. All right, another level three from the Primordial. Solar Superplexer. Oh, gosh, it's even worse. Okay, so two dice. Uh, Titan in front in range. Oh, my gosh, the only guy is Telebacchus, who has six danger. Oh, no. 
So if he has seven fate, he doesn't, thank God. Each hit does one. Okay, that's not too bad. But then he knocks him down and can do a Kratos save. So that's not that's not terrible. Okay, he's got plus one defense, needs eight. Nope. <laughs> So this guy's all the way up to eight, and he is drawing a major trauma, level three. I don't think this one will be lucky for us. And it is Shattered Arms. He doesn't have any weapons, so he gains three fate. Oh, man, that puts him up to eight fate. Oh, no. Telepacus, not looking too good. Okay, he's knocked back three. And I feel like somebody was knocked down, and I just stood them up and cheated. Well, I don't remember who it was at this point, so <laughs> hopefully I'm wrong. Now, the card also said I'd make a Kratos save, so to not draw a card that makes me kind of go berserk and maybe even hurt my friends, I have to roll my Rage or higher. So a 3 or higher, not too tough. Okay, we got it. Good. All right, so we've got a level 3 on top, so clearly there's only one man for the job, our man Odis Zero over here. I'm thinking I might even want to rush around to get an extra red die. Let's do it. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right back where I was. Hello? That's pushing his... Uh... Fate into major danger territory, though. And he's got three dice, no help, but he wants a six or higher. I'd love to see a crit here. Or two hits. Okay, I'll take that. So from the rush, the level five rage, the two hits, and his regular one, we've got five dice, uh, two re-rolls, and two bonus tokens waiting for us. But these threes can be pretty ridiculous, so I don't know if that'll be enough. Okay, this is actually not the worst of five. Okay, so I have uh, two re-rolls and two tokens. Come on. Oh, okay, that's a good start. That's a really good start. Oh, wait, that's it. I already got it. <laughs> so, five, awesome. Let's see. Oh, man, I could have gotten rid of an AI card if I'd gotten a crit, but that's still pretty cool. Oh, my gosh. This guy does not like me having done this. Okay, so he's going to gain... I'm going to make... I'm going to gain one fate. That's not great. I'm going to get pushed back three, although with my uh, skill, I'm going to get pushed back one, but then he's going to do his signature attack against me. Oh, no. Okay, so push back one just means that. Okay, the signature attack, remember, is usually two dice, but I get three because of my high fate, and with my armor, I need nines to dodge. Hey, oh my gosh! Wow, I almost got a critical evade and pushed him back, but I do take one damage here. That's enough for a level two trauma. Unknowns. Oh my gosh, how am I getting all these good ones? I subtract two fate, I'm back down to uh, five. Game Signature finishes by knocking me back five, but with his ability, it's only three, so he's not too far out of the fray. Now, on a very positive note, you'll see that it says deal a double wound and recycle. That means this goes back in, and he's taking a double wound card, so he has seven out of his ten damage. On a negative note, he's getting a plus one damage token, which means every time he hits us now, he's going to do one more damage. Oh my gosh. By the way, here are the generic double wounds and single wounds to go in, like that's from uh, pushing him into a pillar. And sadly, he's going to escalate his one a straight to a three, I believe. So he'll just have almost all threes in the deck. And since there's another three on top, Odysseus is going to leave these tokens for the next person. Speaking of the next person, let's use our best fighter. Our person about to go to six rage over here. And let's see, she's still pretty low on fate. So I think I'm going to have her uh, rush, and she will go to six rage, of course. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I get really lucky, I can push him into another pillar, maybe damage him. Oh, I totally forgot about the minus two armor for that one card. Oh, man, I don't remember. I think I might not have beaten it. Oh, well, we'll just uh, move on anyway. That can make up for the guy that I uh, knocked it down and then forgot was knocked down. Okay, she's got two dice to start, and she needs a five to hit, so hopefully. Only got one. Well, let's use a fate to go for another one. There's a level three here. No, and you can't reroll again. Now, well, despite that bad luck, she's still got four dice, uh, two re-rolls. Let's see what our little three card is. Ooh, pretty easy one to hurt. This is good. This is good. Now, this instinct effect is going to happen no matter what, unless I did a crit, which clearly I didn't. Okay. That was good. That looks... Oh, that's way more than enough. Yeah, because I had uh, two left over for my other guy. All right, so she's going to get pushed back two and get signature attacked. And then nothing, and then he's going to escalate. But then I'll do a double wound, only have one left. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. I can actually uh, be pushed onto these things. So uh, he's just going to come right over and try to punch me. That's okay. Her fate is high enough to need the extra thing. She's got armor. She needs nines. That's not any of those. She's up to five danger, drawing a uh, level two trauma. And it is giant gash. 
Gain one damage and draw another trauma card. I don't know. And luckily, six is still level two. Inner strength. Subtract one damage, and if in range, perform an attack. Oh, yes! Oh, man, you know what? She should have been drawing level threes, not level twos, because he did an extra damage. So, yeah, okay, let's ignore that great card we just got and draw a level three instead. Godly Resolve. That also sounds good. Discard all negative cards and subtract two fate. Okay, so I don't get a free attack, but that's still pretty nice. Yeah, but she still is getting knocked back five. One, two, three, five. Ah, man, so she takes another danger automatically. It puts her up to uh, eight. Gosh. We are reshuffling the body part deck. And again, that's another double wound, so he only has one wound left. So I'd love for number one to be on top. Or number three. Great. <laughs> but she's going to leave the same fun stuff for the next person. In fact, let's do three of the attack tokens and just hope we roll well. All right, so we got Telebacchus and Weak Person. Let's have Telebacchus go, of course. One, two, three, four. I can't get around to shove him into anything, so we'll just stop there. And for a penny and for a pound, might as well go up to nine fate and uh, add a red die with the rush. Now this could all fall apart if I don't even hit. I need sixes. Okay, one hit. I'll take it. And he sadly he's only rage four, so he doesn't get the uh, bonus. But he does have two rerolls on these three, but man, he gets a level three. I don't know. Let's see. Hand, head. Okay, I need a four. Okay, this is good. If I get this, I win. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Oh, that's it, that's it. One, two, and I've got three tokens left over. That's five. Boom! He is destroyed. Now, I'll briefly show you what happens. A lot of this is not in the prelude, so I don't get to see what the riddle of the centimanes does. I don't get to roll on the discovery table. I do level up Hecaton, so uh, in this one you can kind of pick what you fight, sort of again, similar to Kingdom Death, and they can get stronger. Reset all our Triskelions, that means all the people who didn't die go down to zeros, yay. And then we would go and get some cool stuff from this guy and be able to build some new items and things. Uh, we're not going to do that right now. You can go check out that kind of stuff in the campaign video, but... This was Aeon Trespass Odyssey. We destroyed this horrific guy without losing any of us with some crazy card and rolling luck. So uh, there we go. Good gaming, everyone. Check out the campaign play and the review, and we'll see you at the next stop.